Hey everybody, it's Roddy Kirk from BPAC Leader. Um, uh, this is third video from Grant Noble, or for Grant Noble. Um, he has asked again in, uh, a, a, a number of questions, and I'm going to answer them in this video for you. Um, and not only to Grant, but to everybody else can hear the answer for this to see if it can help anybody else as well. So, <clears throat> in the um, comment section and also in the, the subject section, I will again detail the questions that Grant asks and also his thoughts as well. And I'll also now give my thoughts. So, it's quite a simple one, this one really. This one will be quite short, and then I'm going to do another one after this. But the the question is asked is um, Grant is from Noble Dogs in California, uh, um, a great dog walker and dog trainer over in California, and he asked the question, "How do I get the the dog to be comfortable uh, with the gardener, the gardener that comes around to the the home?" And the gardener only comes once a week. Um, and how do I get that when the gardener comes in, the dog doesn't rush and bark? Um, I guess potentially bite, but charge the charge the gardener. So what Grant has listed, and, and I I agree, uh, part of the process would be that the um, the dog would be e collar conditioned, uh, taught e collar, taught remote collar. Uh, but the dog is already, and um, once the dog understands and there is a reinforcement foundation there, then the dog can absolutely be corrected if the dog goes and makes the wrong choices. But that's assuming you're there. Um, the hard part uh, is, and of course you teach fundamentals, teach place training, teach boundary training. The dog gives boundaries and maybe doesn't go in certain areas, but. So you, you could add that where the dog doesn't specifically even go in any certain areas. But the um, the challenge is the owners aren't there when the, when the gardener comes or what if the owners aren't there. So that kind of then puts that out the window. So some of the suggestions were what about an anti-bark collar? Okay, yeah, the anti-bark collar could, could potentially stop the barking, but maybe not necessarily if, if the, the dog is unsure of course, this stranger coming into their garden. Um, so it, that wouldn't necessarily solve that problem. The my if that, if that was me and I was fortunate enough to have a gardener, uh, the, if I had a garden big enough to need a gardener, but if I, if I had a gardener, my main focus about having the dog not rushing and barking at the gardener would be taking the time for the dog to get to know the gardener. That would be my main focus, would be making the effort that the dog gets to know the gardener. That's really what I'd be focusing on. So if, to make things, you kind of guarantee that things are safe um, for, of course, for the, the, the person coming in and for the dog, you want their relationship to be as, you know, as tight as possible. Um, but that may throw up other risks where you go, well, Roddy, I don't want the dog to be you know, really good with the gardener because then who knows what the gardener could do or and it's like, well, you can't have it both ways, you know. You deal with a, a naturally territorial animal and then there's a stranger coming in to the into their territory. Um, the the really only foolproof way of that is either keeping the dog confined in a way from that, which uh, uh, is management. It's not actually sorting the issue. It's management. So that wouldn't be my first protocol, that wouldn't be my advice. Especially living somewhere like California where the dogs may be outside anyway. Um, and if you've got a gardener, maybe you trust them enough to you know, be in your garden. Um, so I, my main focus would be on the dog getting to know the gardener. That they become friends, the dog becomes comfortable. The dog doesn't know there's a gardener. Uh, what if that was, it doesn't matter if that was Uncle John or Grandpa Billy or you know, Auntie Susan, it doesn't you know or a sister or a brother or whatever it's it's that that part is completely irrelevant to the dog or not even un, you know understandable so the the focus would be that 
I would want the dog to spend some time with the gardener, um, of course while you're there with supervision and, and seeing also how the gardener is interacts with the dog, that's an important process as well. And there, there may be that there needs to be teaching, that the gardener needs to be taught how to approach and interact with the dog. But above all, if, if you can have the dog be comfortable with the gardener and the gardener comfortable with the dog, gardener is going to be it would come and go as they please um, your only other suggestion would be again if you've if you have taught if you depends on your level of trust and competence with the gardener but you involve the gardener in the training process so where the the dog that you literally could leave the remote collar uh, or the hand the handset in a certain area the gardener comes around, the gardener has been taught how to use said remote collar, etc. Has maybe also been taught how the dog learns place training or you know a send away or something, you know, an out command or something like that. Um, ideally placed because you want the dog to be comfortable. But they would involve the gardener so they know how to do that. So they could literally come, there's an area of the garden, they pick up the remote, they come in and they're like, hi, Rufus, and the dog starts barking, which is kind of understandable you then would they would have the ability to interrupt that and get you know get the dog's attention and give the dog direction give them something else to do in other words go and lie in your bed or go lie in place um, and that would work really well as well but above all that i feel is most important in that scenario would be the dog becoming comfortable um, friendly um, sociable with that individual then you're not going to have a problem. It doesn't really matter if the person then is really only coming once a week. The dog's comfortable with them. What many homes have, you know, grandparents or parents, etc., that or aunts and uncles or whatever family members that only come twice a year, and the dogs know them and love them. So and they remember them. So to have a gardener that comes once a week, that's totally acceptable for the dog to be able to have a social relationship with that gardener. Um, is, is my feeling. You know, I, I would have that. I have once a week. My um, my guys get fed raw food, so my delivery guy for the raw food he delivers it to the house. Ian he comes um, uh, every Friday night. He comes to my house and drops the raw food, and I would totally trust my dogs um, with Ian. That I trust Ian with the dogs, but I totally trust my dogs with Ian. If I wasn't there and my dogs were in the garden and Ian was leaving the food or something like that, I would totally trust because they have that relationship. They they, they love Ian. He's, he brings them their food, right? He's like, yeah, I love you, and he knows how to handle dogs and things like that. So that's the important part of this equation: is getting a gardener that is willing to do that and comfortable. Now, it's having the gardener understand that's for their benefit, you know. But you then have the same, they might go, well, I don't want to do that, it's none of my business, just put your dog away. Okay, well, you're, you're asking me how would, how would I sort it if, you know, assuming the gardener is up for allowing the dog to be around them. Um, that's what I would do. That's the safest bet. I would not be thinking about tethering the dog away or tying him up or putting him necessarily, you know, in a cage, in a, in a cage or a kennel or... You, you can do that, but they, that's management. That is not, the risk is still there. Get the dog to be comfortable with the human and the risk is gone. So hopefully that helps, hope that makes sense. Uh, but that would be the key thing, is creating a, a, a social relationship and foundation with that individual. It doesn't matter if it's once a week, they will, uh, that's more than enough to be able to have a good relationship. And the gardener then is very safe and so is the dog.